Hi, I'm Veronica Decker, and welcome to Beauty and Fashion Talks here on Arise News. Join me as we chat about the latest in fashion news and beauty. Be sure to keep up with us as we stay on top of trends and key players in the industry within Africa and around the world. What was one of your earliest memories as a girl child? Chances are the famous Barbie doll was involved. Now, whether you were braiding her hair, decorating her dream house, or turning your bathtub into her pool party, Barbie was probably a part of your life for quite some time. Barbie has been around for over 50 years and is an iconic part of the childhood of many little girls, including myself. Today, I'm excited because I will be speaking with Taufik Okoya, the creator of the first ever Nigerian fashion doll. But before then, we will look at some of the amazing hats worn at the Royal Ascot 2018 and several fashion news from around the world. Don't go anywhere because Fashion and Beauty Talks will be right back. Welcome back to Fashion and Beauty. I'm Veronica Odeka. Let's continue with the news. Jay-Z joins Puma Basketball in high-profile role as part of its aggressive aim to relaunch its basketball sneaker market for the first time in 20 years with the help of the rapper and business mogul. The sportswear brand made the announcement on Monday after signing NBA draft prospects DeAndre Ayton, Martin Bagley III, and Zara Smith to its roster. Now, Jay-Z's role will involve him working on art direction for Puma's shoes, as well as creating the general concept of the revived basketball division. Fashion is one of the most important parts of the Royal Ascot, the posh five-day horse racing event in England. In fact, the dress code is an integral part of the British festivities filled with pomp and pageantry. An official style guide has been created outlining the do's and don'ts of ascot wear. One of the rules that is really obvious, hats must be worn, hems should be knee length or longer, and shoulders should be covered up. Now, race attendees don't colorful hats and chic costumes. See some of the pictures of the attention-grabbing hats worn by the guest at this year's ascot from statements, making headpieces to delicate fascinators. Ghanaian American fashion designer Virgil Abloh, highly anticipated Louis Vuitton debut, took to the streets of Paris to discover what streetwear insiders made of the collection. The biggest impact was probably in terms of diversity, with the Heritage House putting on such a multicultural event from Abloh helming the brand to the runway, the crowd and live band playing Kanye West instrumentals. The show marked a shift in fashion industry mentality, with Virgil heading the Louis Vuitton fashion house and other people of color, such as Oliver Rusting, Shane Oliver, currently heading high-profile luxury fashion houses. Clothes will speak more to a wider audience of people who appreciate fashion and luxury, but who may have felt left out of the previous conversation. WizKid, he appeared alongside Naomi Campbell in Dolce & Gabbana's Spring Summer 2019 show at Milan Men's Fashion Week. The Nigerian artist appeared alongside Campbell on June the 16th in a moment Vogue Notes makes him the first African artist to walk at one of the famed house's shows. Check out some of the highlights of his appearance in this video.
exciting was that? Moving on, this week, Vogue fashion brand Alto showed its Resort 2019 show by designer Thomas Mericosi, featuring models and athletes power walking down the ramp. This low impact exercise routine was popularized in the 80s and became synonymous with a group of friends walking down suburban streets at a very swift pace. It's refreshing to see active wear on models and athletes actually moving like one would when active. Clothes have to move differently in this context and adding a bit of fitness nostalgia to fashion is perfect in this age of 80s and 90s fashion revivals. Let's take a look. Wow, that was really interesting. Time now for a short break, but stay tuned because when I return, I'll be talking to Taufik Okoya about Queens of Africa dolls. Don't go away. Welcome back to Fashion and Beauty Talks on Arise News. I'm Veronica Odeka. Taufik Okoya is the creator of the first ever Nigerian fashion doll called the Queens of Africa an arm of the Queens of Africa project, which aims to empower the African girl child. Over the years, a series of children books and inspiring music have been published and produced under the project, all geared towards the positive impartation on the African and Nigerian girl child for a brighter future and has gained grounds both locally and internationally. Welcome to the show, Talfiq. Thank I'm you. so excited to have you here Thank for you. so many reasons, obviously <laughs> because of the dolls and your whole vision behind, the, behind this movement. But I think what's really important is um, first getting down to the nitty gritty of how this came about. I know for my kids, um, my boys and my daughters, they play with dolls simultaneously as when they're young. Was this something that you've had since you were a child or is this something that just came about as you were an adult? How did this start? It actually... Thank you for having me. You're um, glad to be here. But you know, the funny thing is that it actually all happened, um, I would say, by chance. Mm. I actually call it like a God given idea. Mm. Um, I was at home with my daughter mm. on a weekend. Um, she was about three years old then. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, while watching TV, she looked at me and asked me, What color am I? Mm. And Understanding fully well that she knew the answer as much yes. as I knew the answer. Yes. I was like, okay, so where's this going? Yeah. And, you know, I did say, oh, you're black, and, you know. And she had, like, a long face. And I'm like, um, yeah, but black is beautiful. She said, but white is beautiful, too. And mm -hmm. I'm like, so she was more, you know, saying, oh, she wished she was white. Mm -hmm. For me, I realized that she was having an identity crisis mm. at the age of three, yeah. which is rather scary, yeah. you know, as, uh, for a first time father. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was actually doing everything so, you know, perfectly. Perfect, yes. But um, after that conversation, she, I tried to like, you know. Lighten it like, up a Yeah, bit and, and, you know, the different people, yeah. God created different people, we're all beautiful mm -hmm. in our own rights and things like that. But um, after that, because I'm not sure she was rather young, not mm. like she understood. Mm. But I started looking around and it dawned on me. All the toys that I had bought mm -hmm. were white. Mm. The characters she watches on TV were all white based. Mm -hmm. um, she was more about the little mermaid, um, you know, uh, sleeping beauty. Nothing that could really and, identify with yes, her. Yes, so she sees that as, you know, the image mm -hmm. that is acceptable to her. But yes. when she looked in the mirror, that's not what she that's actually saw. Yeah. And then she was like, oh, when she gets her hair undone, she's like, I want it down, I want it down. Straight. And you know, this is her with a big nappy hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you know, too young to texturize. Mm -hmm. And so I started, you know, thinking that, you know what, um, there's, a, there's a bit of a psychological thing mm -hmm. there. That's happening. And almost yes. identifying, I think, for you, that's the light bulb moment to say that if my daughter 
at three at home is having these kind of questions, there must be, a, it's not a personal problem. This is a problem that is yes. far stretched. I know we're a product of our environment sure most times and what we're exposed mm -hmm. to. Um, but the greatest shock came on when after I'd done all the development and everything like that, and you know, so excited, waiting for a pat mm -hmm. on the back for a job well done. Um, we got to stores and stores were telling me that, mm -hmm. oh, well, they wanted mm -hmm. um, white dolls because they sell yes. better. Yeah. And I'm like, hello. So yeah. with that, mm -hmm. I realized that there was a need to educate like the general public, yes. uh, you know, about the importance and psychological effects. Right. So you but know, before we, you know, I don't want to jump too hard, but I think I'm sure that people are watching at home and they're just saying, OK, great. But how, how did you start? Like, how do, how do you come about creating this idea? Because it's one thing to have a conversation and tell your daughter, <laughs> you are not, you are not white, I will find a door for you. But it's a different thing to then say, you know what, hmm, let me now take this idea and this concept that God has given me, a light bulb moment, and actually create something that is physical that she can have. And that you're now giving back to the world. How was that? What was the transition like for that? It, okay, this also now involved my niece. Mm -hmm. What had happened was that she was um, going to be about seven or eight mm -hmm. years old back then. And I thought, okay, you know what? I want to give her a gift that yes. is going to be instrumental towards her development because she's getting close. And you know how girls grow continually. Yes. Um, and they, they're more mature, mm -hmm. you know, than boys at that age. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, okay. So I went into the store and I'm, <laughs> the shelf was full of white dolls. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, so this really does explain a lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that if we don't, even if we're saying you want a black dog, mm -hmm. where do you get them? Yes. But because um, I also worked in the family business as an executive director for mm -hmm. over 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of research and development and so went into production. So you have that a bit of an yes. experience behind So I was you. able to actually dissect it and you know, understand what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I did you know, a research for over a year, mm -hmm. looking at what's out there, you know, um, you know the, the, the movement, mm -hmm. and you know, if I were to do a black dog, what are the things? I mean, like I wanted them in proper traditional outfit. So you, that would be the first port of identif identification because that is obviously what our culture. So you're, you, you were saying that in order to start this, it's, get, it's best to go back to your roots. Yes. To really get something that's authentic yes. in visibility so that when they're seeing it, you know, they can really truly identify yes. with the doll. How was the perception or how has been the reaction to these dolls? I know internationally they've been doing amazingly well but how has it been when you first created these dolls from when you started and now what has been the perception initially like i said you know you know it was like mm -hmm. i almost thought oh god some <laughs> people thought i was mad yes. but um <laughs> after like i now realize so i started doing, granting interviews and you know mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. on um you know tv radio mm -hmm. talking about the impact mm -hmm. and everything of you know the dolls um i think it took an accept which is rather sad it took mm -hmm. like a uh, kind of acceptance from the international um, world for me to gain acceptance here. Yes. Um, and so by the time, you know, people start, I mean, because I had, you know, people calling me from almost all over the world. Yes. They wanted to feature me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. But you see, like you rightly said, the, it's not the fact that I'm the first to create a black doll or an African doll. I am the first to create a Nigerian doll. Mm -hmm. But, um, and there were so many people that were copying the concept, mm -hmm. even like, and I'm like, you know, people do get creative. Mm -hmm. But anyways, by the time I was, you know, putting this together, I actually had to look at it properly, on this, you know, the, the outfit, mm -hmm. the hair, the makeup, everything. the face, everything to detail, you know, and I think the mm -hmm. fact that people could identify with the fact that as a man mm -hmm. and as a Nigerian and African, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I understood the culture. So it's not just having mm -hmm. to make the doll, it's but a it's whole actually, lot more. yeah. It, 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 it symbolizes a lot more than just the doll. So we're going for a really short break, but when we come back, we're gonna look at the doll. We're gonna talk about Nigerian fashion. We're gonna continue this conversation right after the break. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. conversation with Taufik. So before we went on the break, we were talking about the dolls and how you got started, which is great, and creating this doll, Nigerian doll that has done extremely well. You've been interviewed by Elle and, you know, I think in the UK for BBC on so many levels discussing the dolls. I want to talk about the fashion. You know, while you did start with your roots of creating something with the Nigerian, you know, clothing and, um, you know, 
What about now? We're moving into the future. Children are very much moved by technology nowadays. The fashion world is evolving. And even though we are not really copying what's going on in the Western world, we are influenced by it heavily in our own country. How have you been able to use these dolls to kind of not only aid your brand moving you forward, but also um, creating a presence across the world? OK, great. Um, what it is is that, you know, um, I don't want to be like the dinosaurs and get cut off. Yes. And you know that um, <laughs> children nowadays are getting more into mm -hmm. like, you know, um, technology and, mm -hmm. you know, screen based sort of games and so on, mm -hmm. rather than physical toys. Yes. But there's still that need to be able to connect. Yes. One of the things we've done as trying to also get kids to connect is that we have like two, three tones, skin mm -hmm. tones. Okay, We're still which going is to really introduce important. So uh, other skin dolls. tones too. Mm -hmm. um, this is the inner cat. She's mm -hmm. a bit fairer, mm -hmm. and she has like the you know um, tight curls. Mm -hmm. You know, and by the time it's combed out, it's all like an afro. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we've done with the outfit because mm -hmm. I wanted a situation where we would have them in traditional Nigerian outfit, mm -hmm. because children really rarely ever see anybody dressed like that. Mm -hmm. My daughter and her you know cousins will call them mama, mm -hmm. so they're like you know we don't want the mama ones. Mm -hmm. You know we want the ones. So what I've done is to like do mm -hmm. like a fusion yes. using like African prints. Mm. You know, you know how you do the, the different geometric yeah. prints and then pair it up with like, you know, a psychedelic set of pants so that they can still relate this to it. This is very while contemporary and modern African. and fashionable, Thank but still, you. you know, a bit of African culture. Which is part of what we try to do. Mm. Then um, we have like the prints also at the back because as African, we're very mm. colorful. We have, you know, uh, we, we, you know, we have a lot of geometrical prints and, um, you know, rather bold. At the back, what I've also done, because one day I was at the airport, I realized that there's so many people coming, you know, foreigners coming into mm -hmm. Nigeria. And I'm thinking that, if they were to go back and want to buy something for their daughter, mm -hmm. what would they buy? So there's a story on the back. Yeah, so I did a you know, brief um, history on Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I also broke down the meaning of the name mm -hmm. and where it's from and what it represents. You so, know. so let me talk about this. With, this. with what it represents, I know your mission statement has a lot to do with hope and a lot to do with trust. Do you feel that you've successfully been able to tie that into the creation of these dolls? Because what you're doing is also promoting a very healthy engagement and understanding of, of your culture to be proud mm. to be Nigerian that other people can take, especially people in the diaspora that might not have that connection. How do you feel like you've been able to do that successfully? With it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. Mm. And, you know, it's really having to deal with it subconsciously yes. than, you know, physically. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people, when people begin to see it and appreciate it, and, you know, when they can relate to it, they can appreciate it. Yes. So what we've done right now is to put our foot through the door. Yes. I mean, like, we're still just about barely 10 <laughs> yeah, years yeah, old. Sure. And, you know, so what we're doing is mm. we have a project that I'm also contemplating on mm. to actually have, like, um, dolls done in the full traditional um, Nigerian outfit. Yes. And then with the, it's called Queens of Africa because we're also going to now document other African cultures. Queen. So this is a way to expand within Africa yes. as a whole and the reach to, to, to get more awareness and to get even more, more identification awareness. within other countries. And once you countries. begin to see images, mm -hmm. you know, because like, you know, you, you might rarely see people dressed like that, mm -hmm. but when you see it, it can be the springboard for you to even now make it maybe more modern, have a twist to it, but at least it's not totally eroded, you know, so mm. it's still going to be there and we want to bring it in in a relevant manner. Oh, wow. You know, which is why we want to do the traditional ones. And then those ones will be like keepsakes. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to also probably do like a competition where we'd have people design mm -hmm. the outfits and we'll get them made. Um, we have in, pro in, you know, in the pipeline mm -hmm. to, to so talk to... So so there's so much that is going on with the brand right now. Yes. Well, I thank you so much, Taufik. I know we don't have a lot of time, but people that are watching definitely know where they can get the dolls. I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, where can I get the dolls from? So it's going to be available. I mean, it's actually available now, and you do have yes. a website. It's on Facebook as well, so yes. people can get there. Thank you. Yes, well, I will definitely that. have you <laughs> back on the show. That's all from Fashion and Beauty Talks today. Thank you so very much for watching. Till next time, goodbye for now.